Hello, my name is Glenn Collins and I'm uh, Head of Technical Advisory at ACCA and I'm joined today by three very good friends of ACCA. We've got virtually Alan Woods who's uh, from Wood Squared. He's just moved offices today so you'll be hearing from Alan. Um, that's hoping that all of his IT uh, equipment is, is actually up to date. We'll hear from Alex Faulkner Herter from Soaring Faulkner Accountancy and Alex will impress you with her a digital way her practices is actually working. And we've got Mark Lee, speaker, author, and mentor. Um, and he has a very, very good catchphrase, and that's book Mark Lee. So you, you've heard it here from me. Um, and the topic today, we're talking about awards and creating a worthy entry. Um, there are awards that practitioners can enter. There are also awards that clients can enter. Um, today, when we're talking about practitioners, you can also apply these across to awards for your, your clients. So that please do use that and please do use the, the comments made to actually go across and apply to your clients as well. Now there are a large number of reasons why firms highlight why they don't enter awards. It takes too much time. What's the value? Um, the cost is too great. There will always be somebody better, better equipped to win. I never have any luck. Uh, we don't need to promote ourselves, and the, the usual one I get coming through is, it's something we don't do as accountants. Well, Mark, Alan, and Alex are here to give you their reasons why to enter awards, and we'll also look and we'll highlight what's good and what's good for judges to actually see and hear. The format, we'll have Mark, will guide you through the process of, of what he does for uh, entries he sees coming through, and his thoughts on creating an award-winning uh, entry. The panel will then share, you, share with you their experiences and answer your questions. So please do take some time and send in your questions to us. Um, we'll get through as many, many questions as we can, so do, do send them in. And then we're going to highlight um, a few of the UK awards that you, you can actually look and you can actually enter now. But I'll pass over to Mark, our expert, on guiding you through what he does and, and actually what judges actually look for. Mark, over to you. Thank you, Glenn. Um, I've, I've been a, a judge, been fortunate to be invited to be a judge at numerous uh, awards ceremonies over the years for accountants and, and for tax advisors. And I've seen good entries, I've seen average entries, and I've seen a few poor entries as well. And the fact is, it's quite easy easier than you might think to get shortlisted for an award because there are often so many poor entries submitted. The very first thing you want to do is to allocate some time to review the entry criteria and then perhaps list out the adjectives that are described in the entry criteria for the awards themselves, generally, and specifically those for any particular category that you're looking to enter. But when you've done that, you can then start to formulate your entry making sure you pick up and reflect the criteria and the uh, information that the judges, the uh, entry requires you to submit in order for the judges to spot that your entry is worthy of being shortlisted and possibly even of winning. Uh, I created a, a checklist a while ago because Glenn and I spoke yeah. at uh, AccountEx a, a year or so ago, uh, gave a presentation as to how accountants could enter, win awards and benefit from being shortlisted for the awards as well. And uh, I was reviewing that this morning in anticipation of, of this session. And there's a, a list of things that it's quite easy to do to, get a, to create a good entry. And possibly the most important point there is to allocate enough time to prepare your entry in advance and then ensure that you let somebody who hasn't seen it proofread it for you because something that's very easy to let yourself down on is poor English, poor use of grammar. And a lot of judges will mark you down on that, particularly if they have other entries that appear just as worthy, but haven't been put together well enough to make it easy for the judges to decide that you are a potentially award-winning practice. Just think back to uh, the time when you did your exams, whether that was recent or many years ago, as it, as it was for me. Remember the, the lesson we were all told when we were entering exams? That is, make it easy for the examiner to give you the marks that you're looking for. 
You want to make it easy when you're entering awards, make it easy for the judges to see from your opening paragraph that your award is your entry is worth reading compared to others they might have that look boring or samey or don't stand out in any way at all. And I'm sure one of the reasons that Alex and, and Alan have been winning awards is because their entries stand out compared to others. And it's quite easy if you think about it in advance and prepare well to make sure that your entry stands out and that you could be a potentially award-winning practice yourself. Um, Alex, Alan, um, I mean, how do you react to a, to a comment uh, around the fact awards are just a one evening and it's actually not worth the investment or not worth the take of the investment? Alex, do you have a, a comment on that? Um, yes, I do. So um, pre the business, I didn't really take much interest um, into entering awards. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't really... Um, come across as it's something that we, we should do. Um, but again, setting up the business, I recognise that preparing the awards and everything that you have to do before that, there's a lot that goes into it. It's not just about the awards evening and you know being awarded um, you know with the, the with everything around yeah, around yeah. So that surrounds it. So um, it I would disagree. Don't just think it is just for the ceremony because it definitely isn't for that. Alan, would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I totally agree with that. I think the benefit we find with the awards events in, in themselves is getting the team involved. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a great way of actually sharing the progress that you've made as a firm. Um, that celebration, that, just, that team event, whether you win or not, you know, just being able to share that with the team and getting them engaged is, is a great um, benefit in itself. And just to, just to amplify at that point, of course, one of the other benefits of winning awards, that's, or even entering being shortlisted for awards, is, is it makes recruitment easier because again, it helps your practice to stand out compared to other practices. Yeah. You tell me earlier, you've got five staff, yeah. and I'm sure it was easier to recruit them because of the nature of your practice. And yeah. going forward, you get better quality yeah. applicants. So since um, uh, entering awards and being recognised and, and building my profile, I'm now receiving CVs directly yeah. through. Uh, whereas before, I was like speaking to recruitment agencies, um, so you know, people actually want to come and work for the company. Mm. And I know, Alan, you've found the same, haven't you? Yeah, we have, yeah, and I think that, yeah, the, the beauty of it is, it's especially when you're speaking to recruitment agencies, that's so competitive out there at the moment with getting new team members and being top of the pile for receiving their CVs. If they've got something to tell the candidates about that's different and unique to your offering than, than somebody else, you know, that, that, that puts you just hopefully um, top of the pile for anyone that does, you know, in terms of recruitment that, that's looking to speak to candidates on a regular basis. Yeah, and that's, that's what we found, it, you know, it makes your firm far more attractive to prospective candidates. But, but what about your your existing staff? How do they, they view it? I know you brought along your, your team to several award events, Alan. Yeah, we do. We, we try as far as possible, whatever we do as a team, it, it, it is a team effort. So, um, I think I've been to different events before and you can sometimes see the partners there or the directors there and it's, it can sometimes feel a little bit disconnected um, so the team then perhaps don't feel like they're able to fully share in the in the successes and the benefits of what the, what the firm's been achieving. Um, we, we firmly believe that the team understand the business far better and they understand what we're trying to achieve as a business gather in the past and also then moving forwards. So that we can get there much much quicker when they're all you know fully on board and fully engaged. Yeah. Yeah. And also, if you think about the, some of the awards events we've attended uh, as as judges, sometimes there's clearly an entire team sitting on the table. I was just about to say to Alan, I'm, and I we've seen several photographs of his entire team, not only at the table but actually also at collecting. And, um, yeah. yeah. And, and and on the stage, the yeah. cheer that goes yeah. up when certain names are. are uh, identified by the celebrity host, there's often a celebrity yeah. host at these awards, and and I think it can be quite embarrassing for particularly for larger firms when there's only one or two people and nobody cheering for absolutely. them. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, absolutely. But, but I suppose going back to that comment that it's not just one evening. Um, how do you use your your entries? How do you use your your application going through in marketing? When do you start your marketing marketing process? And I know I'll, I'll go to, to Alan first uh, on that. Uh, yeah, 
So as soon as we know that we're, we've been shortlisted or a finalist in an award, we tend to start mentioning it, sharing it on uh, social media, uh, to people at networking events through BNI or you know whatever they might well be. Um, you know, we're never shy of sharing the the fact that we've actually been shortlisted. Um, and as as Mark mentioned earlier, it's, it's maybe not as difficult sometimes to be shortlisted as perhaps people may think. But the the, the wider business community there doesn't know that you know that. There's always an assumption, I think, whenever there's an award entry that you've been personally selected uh, independently and anon- anonymously. You know, there's, there's no process where you're involved yourself. Um, so I think that in, in and of itself, just being shortlisted, that the business community just feels like, well, if they've come and actually selected you from thousands of businesses in the whole of the, the UK, whereas actually they may have only been three or four. To, but you know we don't tell them that bit. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's a great marketing tool, a great differentiator, uh, and we we start as, as soon as we know that we've been shortlisted. Um, uh, yes, the same same for myself. So um, we would put it onto Twitter, Facebook. We'd update our emails with the the logo um, and our website just to let everybody know that we've got to a certain stage. Yeah. Um, and again, we just follow it up. So once we get an update on it. It will then go straight all out onto all the social medias, and the team have their, their own handles as well. So, I know Mark, we've spoken about this a number of times that we even sometimes go slightly before that process. So, um, when, when would you start your marketing? I, I think, well, if I think about the accountants that, I, that I've mentored, yeah. and one in particular who was so thrilled when he won, won an award, he called me up on stage to join him with his yeah. team when he realised <laughs> I was there. Um, I hadn't judged the award that, that he'd taken part in, but uh, he particularly wanted to be able to say that he was an award-winning practice, mm. and it was his second or third year of, of entering, and as soon as he submitted his entry, he started telling people that we've entered, or we've been nominated for the British Accountancy yeah. Awards, or Practice Excellence, which, whichever one it, it was, and uh, I, I think he said we've been nominated, even though he'd nominated himself, well the practice has been nominated, because yeah, he said, absolutely. He said yeah. some, somebody so nomination. nominated, so yeah. there, there was a nomination, and so not only was he telling people, not only was it in his email footer, on his website with the awards logo, but his staff were sharing it as well, on their Facebook pages, on their uh, social media, on their LinkedIn pages or whatever, and it's something that's often overlooked, because we, you know, there's a lot of accountants out there still not embracing social media, and I understand that. And get, however active I am, I do get that. It's really important to distinguish social media generally from LinkedIn, yeah. which is an online business network. And frankly, it's a really good idea for all accountants to have a decent LinkedIn profile for themselves, mm-hmm. for key members of staff, a business page for the practice, and to treat that separately and more seriously than you might treat social media generally. And to ensure that there's good references to being nominated and then to being shortlisted if you are, and to being a winner, well, that's yeah. just fantastic. And, you know, we we are actually able to help our members with a, with a lot of that. We also do perhaps some of the local media contacts and actually pushing things out to local media. So we've done that for, for firms in the, in the past and we've offered that across the firms. Um, with ACCA we have a strong media contacts going through and, and you know actually this is this is about highlighting our members and the great work they've done. And so let so letting yeah. letting uh, local media know that you're an award winning practice yeah. or shortlisted to be award winning practice, whether that's local print media or local radio media mm-hmm. as well. If they're looking for a, a local accountant or somebody who can talk about business yeah. issues, finance issues potential impact of Brexit on local businesses, potential impact of our parliament, whatever the topical issues of the day yeah. are. Because I've realised that just dated this. Uh, it, it has, <laughs> but we forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> um, then, yeah, journalists and broadcasters are always on the lookout for good people, credible people, mm. to speak to, to their audiences. Yeah. So any support that the ACCA can provide its members and, it, and being nominated, shortlisted, or winning makes it easier to evidence your credibility compared to everybody else. And there is there is also a piece about clients, telling your clients, prospective clients, prospective clients, especially. Yeah. I know an awful lot of firms actually 
involved their clients as part of this, this process? I know, Mark, you've been, been involved with several who have gone down that route. Well, it, it, it is very important, as you say, Glenn, mm -hmm. because, it, 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 again, if you think about uh, what's going to make a, an entry stand out, yeah. then there's a huge difference between the assertions that the accountant makes about their practice and some independent, external, credible mm -hmm. confirmation of that. So going back to LinkedIn again, if you've been in the habit of encouraging clients or allowing clients to uh, give you recommendations on LinkedIn, then you can access that information and include it or provide links to it, extracts from it in your award entry. Uh, you can also ask clients to support your award entry, as I suspect you've, you've done, Alex, and, and Alan as well. And there's a bit of embarrassment around that. You know, we're accountants, yeah. we, can, we, can, we can't ask for these things. Clients generally love providers, providing confirmation that they've got a great accountant. What's the worst thing that can happen if you ask if you ask one of your clients to endorse your entry as a worthy entrant for the awards? The worst thing that can happen is the client goes, no, I think you're rubbish. But that's a good thing. Yeah. Because if you thought everything was okay, and you've got a client who actually doesn't think as well of you as you thought, thank goodness you found out before they would left and gone somewhere else. You're in a position where you can rectify and repair the relationship. And frankly, you're then going to be Absolutely. well placed to get their endorsement the following year. I have heard once the tale being told to me of a firm who did regular newsletters featuring their clients, who was then told by their biggest client, why haven't you approached me? And the, the partner quickly turned around and said, we were saving you for our special Christmas Eve. Oh, I didn't yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but actually, it got across a point that clients were actually looking at this. And said, yeah. yeah, this is good. I like this. I like my firm actually projecting themselves out and telling people about who they, they have for and what they, they do. So, um, Alan, Alex, have you had the same experience? Alex, do you want to fire away? Have you approached clients yet? Or, or uh, uh, yeah, so. Um, if I've um, uh, entered awards, I've, I've let um, a handful of clients know, uh, and sometimes I'll, I'll pick up the phone or I'll, I'll, when I'm meeting up with them, mm -hmm. just let them know that I've entered an award. And they're always excited about it and really happy that I'm entering uh, because of my business setup that I've done. And it is different to a lot of the traditional firms. Mm -hmm. So they think it's excellent and really good news. And it's something that they're proud of as well. Um, and we've included um, the tweets in, in yeah. where, where we have been shortlisted or we've entered, um, and then they've retweeted it for us, going, "Oh, you know, well done and good luck." Mm. And you know, it's just a, it's just like a nice feeling that mm. you know you're keeping this relationship and you're including the clients and the staff in the process. You've got a family together. Yes. Yeah. You know, just before we go to Alan mm. on that, sorry, Alan. Um, one of the concerns that you often hear, whether it's about uh, involving clients, getting them to mm. retweet or uh, to share information on LinkedIn and recommendations yeah. of mine. One of the concerns you, you hear from accountants sometimes is, well, I don't want everybody else to know who my clients are because then they'll, then they'll go after my account, but then they'll go after my clients and try and nick them. Mm -hmm. Well, do a good enough job, but they won't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Good point. laughs> yeah. We should be sharing tweets. Alan, Alan, yeah. Alan what's, uh, have you proposed to clients? Yeah, yeah, I think I think from our point of view, we, we share it with all of our clients. Um, sometimes we've asked them to get involved and do quotes where that's been appropriate in the award entry. Um, but we definitely share it with them. We've got a reception full of, um, or sort of wait, waiting area full of different awards, um, runners up certificates, plaques, and anything and everything that we've um, accumulated over the over the process. And um, we've actually had conversations and, and clients asking us then for help with putting together award entries for them. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Or at least giving them feedback and asking them, you know, what award entries are there? Because obviously there's, there's award entries for, for general business, as you said at the beginning, Glenn, that, that aren't necessarily just solely focused on accountancy firms. Um, so it's been a really good, again, differentiator and different conversations out with business clients rather than just about accounting tax and the things that other accountants perhaps are speaking to them about. And, and has, that, has that also been fee earning for you or, or not, Alan? Not to this extent, no, because it's mainly just been a, I suppose, a goodwill thing, really. And it's, and it's been a really good exercise to actually understand more about the business. Because, as Mark will know, with, with judging a lot of award entries, um, 
there's a lot more data in background that goes into the entries that perhaps isn't obvious when you look at a business just from the the set accounts or websites etc and so it's it's a really good tool from that point of view to develop a a better and stronger relationship and just picking up on that point about uh, helping clients enter rewards or giving them some tips and ideas or encouragement uh, turn that on its head we tend to think and the awards that that i've judged and possibly you as well that they're the rewards specifically for accountants and the tax people but actually, there's a lot of local business awards Absolutely. that accountants can enter Absolutely. because accountants are running businesses, or should be. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, now moving on from from what Helen has just said, that that review process and that inward business review process is actually quite important actually, from a from a practice point of view to to go through because there are there'll be things that you do that are innovative and, and new and different. There will be things that that actually every accountant um, does, but it's actually how that makes it different from your clients and also your your staff going going forward that, that quite often comes out as part of the award winning entry. Can now, I just pick, just pick up yeah, on that? Yeah, sure. Because I think that there's a couple of really important points there. The first one is what if it's an award that's going to where the entry criteria includes innovation of some sort, yeah. then don't embarrass yourself by claiming something to be innovative where you're just catching up with the herd. Absolutely. Because yeah. as a judge, that just looks yeah. really silly. And we've True. seen that yes. many, many yes. times. Yeah, an accountancy firm saying, oh, we've moved into the cloud. Oh, brilliant, well done you. But that's not innovative now because firms have been doing that for yeah. up to 10 years or yeah. more. Um, the, uh, the, the second point is it's another reason for entering awards, even if you're not going to get shortlisted. Simply the fact that you've had to review your processes and identify the way you're operating, just it gives you a reason to have a, almost a strategic review of the practice. You might decide not to enter this year, but to put things and changes in place so that next year you've got a potential award-winning practice. But at the moment, you recognise there's not enough differentiators yeah, there. And how, do you, how can you judge that? Well, one of the things you can do is look at who entered and got shortlisted and won the award you're going for last year. Yeah. Check out their website, check out uh, any reference that's been to the awards that they won, and why they won the awards, and see whether or not you compare with that positively or not. And if you don't, then perhaps next year's the time to enter take the opportunity now as part of a review to put the changes in place so that you really stand a decent yeah. chance of being sure that's um, next time. Absolutely, and that's you know that is probably one of the um, important processes that, that you get out of this as a firm when you're actually looking at what do I do, how could I make make that better, how could I improve that? Yeah. Because that will all lead to ultimately increased profit profitability and and sorry for bringing it back to those words of an accountant, but that's what we're looking at in the end. It's so, true, isn't it? so, Alex, have you have you looked at your processes? Have you have you looked and made changes? Or so, as a new practice, did you get everything perfect from day one? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish I did. Um, you know, it, you do look at things a lot more closely um, is when you enter the awards because you you want to start looking into um, you know the cost of everything and your mm-hmm. processes procedures and you want to make sure that you've got well me personally that everything is as streamlined as possible Um, but when you're writing the application and you're following the criteria and you're reading the question and saying what's it asking me and then you go back to your data and you're like right how can I pull this information out Mm -hmm. so you end up sort of going into a lot more detail than you normally would when you're just running the business you're looking at the costs and the income, but I've started to break things down into, you know, the cost of acquiring and, you know, the lifetime value of mm-hmm. the client. Mm-hmm. Just a lot more information, whereas pre the awards, I might not necessarily have looked into it into so much detail, yeah. but it's helped me budget and then put actual visa budgets, for example, and then I can then compare how I've achieved that year after year. And Alan, have you have you been through a similar process yourself? Yeah, definitely. The, the first award entry we did was actually not for an accountancy 
uh, awards, so linking onto what Mark mentioned earlier, the local business awards, that we had to be broader, I suppose, in, in the areas that we looked at, because it wasn't just looking at the, you know, the, the, the sort of more stereotypical KPIs that county firms and county awards may be looking at. Yeah. Um, that process then almost gave us a benchmark to be able to then measure ourselves against going forwards. So we knew we knew where we were. We we were lucky enough to, to win that year as, as a startup, um, and we knew then that based on that, obviously we needed to get better and improve on that year on year to to continue a as, a, as being a, a business that was that was profitable, as you said, Glenn, um, but also to continue to be uh, differentiating ourselves from other businesses in the area. And can I can I then ask you as well? And, and Alex has mentioned this. Do you find it hard paring down your entry? Because as as a judge, and I know Mark and I have discussed this a few times, there is nothing worse than receiving a entry where the word count is four hundred, and yeah. you and you start to receive sixteen hundred words coming through. Um, so. How, how do you pare down that 1,600 words of very valuable information into that, okay, this is my entry, because the, the organisers of awards are getting rather strict on, on that now. Yeah, I think the key thing that we try and do, I think it's back to like Mark mentioned about exams earlier, yeah. um, and I think with that, it's, you know, it's bullet points, be, be, you know, if you want to make more points than perhaps you would want to, just summarise the main points. Don't waffle, don't sort of put things in there that just expands on the same point. Yep. And the key, key thing that I've always had in mind when I do any award entry, I, I love the ones that have got a, a word count. Um, I, really, I really struggle with the ones that don't because you almost end up putting in far too much rubbish then to put your things for put loads in here, so you just keep going. Um, whereas when it's got a word count, my rule of thumb has always been if you can easily write 80% of the word count, without necessarily having to overly think too hard, yeah. then you're going to have a strong entry because you're not having to sort of pull it, oh, well, how, how do I fill the words, how do I flower this out because I've only done half the word counts, yeah. for instance. So that's always been a rule of thumb that I've tried to apply when I'm, when I'm looking at doing any sort of entries. One of the, one of the things that, that just comes out of that for anybody who's not entered awards before, or even for those who have, is historically, uh, you used to enter all awards on paper, yeah. and uh, and I can remember times when I not only got voluminous award entry but also loads of supporting material as well. And I remember times when boxes would be delivered to my house yeah. to to go through. It's been far too long for uh, for the reward of having <laughs> been a judge and, having, yeah. and getting a free ticket for the uh, the ceremony, uh, going through it all. More and more of the awards now require online entries mm -hmm. only, and not just PDFs or Word documents attached, but sometimes you have to cut and paste your information into the entry boxes on, you know, on, on the form, and some of those will have a word count and will block you off if yes. you try to put in more words than the space for. But again, if you are going to do that, then try and avoid cutting and pasting from a Word document because that will often include a lot of additional characters that make it difficult for the judges yeah. to read it yeah. easily. Yeah. So make that. sure you follow the guidance. You've, you've had yeah, I've had, that that issue. I've had that issue. So I've um, prepared it in, the, in a Word document and um, tried to copy and paste it. And I had the exact characters in the Word document. As soon as I pasted it through, yeah. um, it wouldn't allow me to submit it. I'm like, oh, yeah. no. <laughs> and how am I going to fix this? Um, yeah, and it took a while to... Um, to, to then, figure it. That may <laughs> so. be frustrations, a real frustration. <laughs> Particularly if you've left it to the last minute. Yeah. Remember one of my early comments was, you know, start in good time. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest allowing at least a half a day at the outset, and then in, and try and aiming to be finished at least a week before the deadline. So if you hit any last minute glitches, you're not up till midnight trying to work your way through it. And risking grammatical errors, poor use of English, uh, bullet points, you know, blank bullet points, or any other glitches that always hit us at the last minute when there's nobody around to help sort things out. And for one of those entries I'll be mentioning a bit later, Mark, it's actually in a week's time, so 
don't be put off by that. Just <laughs> go for it. <laughs> and, the yeah. <laughs> but so do it. Do, do, do this again. We're, we're actually seeing a um, an awful lot more in terms of electronic submissions. And actually, some of the some of the standout submissions have been those who've included small videos from clients um, and also from from members of their their team. Um, I mean. Alex, have you, have you thought about that? Have you considered that as a, as a route yet? Um, yes, yeah, so I've, um, I've, I've done a, a few videos, yeah. um, and so in the previous entries, I've attached a link to the video. Yeah. Um, um, I think that's one of my website on the front page. I've used that in, in a couple of the mm -hmm. entries of the awards that I've uh, done as well. So um, it's just it's giving something different to, yeah. to the judges um, to have a look at. Um, some entries you can't have attachments, so you just literally have to stick to the, the character of what you're putting through rather than the quantity. And how easy have you found to do those videos? Have you found it time consuming to, to do them? Um, so do you have a professional studio <laughs> and, um, not at all. and cameraman in place? No, not at all. So um, it's pretty much um, similar to today, you know, um, you, you can set your little um, pod up and you know you can you can make sure it's a clear room yep. and it's empty and, and you can do a you know, minute video or, or less than that. Possible, um, and then you can attach it, and you can do the same with your team members. Um, other videos I had done professionally, um, which I was able to use in, in previous yeah. award entries. The great advantage of a professional video is it tends to be more. It's as much the sound quality. I'm pretending I've got a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it tends to be the sound quality is dramatically yeah. improved, it, and that of course, you know, a decent photographer will also make sure the video quality is great yeah. as well. Um, it's the content with a, an awards entry. It's the content Absolutely. that matters more yeah. than anything else. You're not generally, unless it says in the awards criteria, best business video. Yeah. <laughs> you're not generally being judged on that. So it's the content that matters. So preparation, thinking in advance, what questions you're going to ask, and perhaps cut out so that the client is just you, you just show the, the client answering the question or saying give, giving their answers to whatever you you prompted them on. But I, I love what Alex said. If you've got a decent video of clients or staff saying good things about the firm, make use of that Absolutely. on your website, yeah. on your LinkedIn profile, share it on Twitter, Facebook, or whatever. And get maximum value from the time and effort you've put into preparing an awards entry. Uh, Alan, have you gone down that route yet yourself? Uh, not specifically videos uh, for us or clients directly, but we do a charity barbecue and quiz once a year. Yeah. Um, and as one of those one of those awards or one of those questions on the on the quiz, we always do uh, an activity type round. Um, so we've had the hacker in the past, obviously quite relevant well with the um, with the Lions tour. Uh, we've also had the um, them doing the Olympics, so they were trying to do the hundred meter dash and they had to make the most uh, look the best when they were crossing the finishing line. Uh, and we video those sort of, like, sort of events and put them onto the, our YouTube channel and website yeah. and then a link in, because especially if it's to do with social responsibility or things that we do in the community, yeah. we'll put a link to that type of thing then onto the, onto the award entry then. So, um, yeah, we, we try our best to make it a little bit different than, than, than others. So those, those things are really things you're doing through, and what we're, what we're saying here is it's activity you're doing in your normal, everyday, day to practice day-to-day -day practice work that you're actually doing and using as part of that, that awards entry. Now we've we've said we've said it may take time. Um, and Mark has Mark has said he's he's available to anyone for a week, you know, to, to help them with their entry. Um, but no. Um, how much time do you actually take putting together a an entry? Because because you you have an impression that it could take a long time, could take you away from fee earning for an awful long time. Um, yet some of the most successful entries are where somebody's actually put down their thoughts and their, their ideas and their process, and they've involved others. They've got others to look at it and comment on it. And that seems to reduce the time. So how, how much time do you, do you each spend on the awards entry? So, what do you say? Um, I couldn't specifically, I mean, I've not recorded the time how long I've actually spent on an award entry, but it's not about a waste of time or, I think, you know, it's yeah. more about the, the work that I'm looking at and how I'm putting it together. I'm 
generally looking at the business. So how I look at it is part of the business development. So even though I'm working towards an award entry, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, right, this is my business, and yeah. I need to know where I'm going with it. So that time that I'm putting into you know, answering the question and, and getting all that data, I just think, right, you know, this is the stuff that I have to do anyway. Mm -hmm. So I don't think, yeah. you know, whatever time I put into it is an investment time. Mm -hmm. And Alan? <coughs> yeah, I'd say the same. I think, I think um, like Alan said, we, we try and invest um, a lot of um, time into seeing what we've done well and what we've done not so well and try and learn from those things we haven't done so well to, to make sure we don't do them the next time. And we track them as we go through the, the year. So we, we sort of make, almost keep a log um, of, of the successes we've had, things that we've tried, new software we've put in, new initiatives we've tried. But when it comes to do award entries, we've got at least some points that we can refer back to. Yeah. And we'll then brainstorm a particular award entry in a, in a team meeting, um, on, on the weekly team meeting, and we'll ask, you know, what have we done in particular? Have any particular good client feedback? Any particular projects we've done in the last uh, few months that we want to try and include? And then but we used to be maybe just taken on a marketing person, so a marketing person member that would then put together the, the actual entry, which then comes back to myself and, and Tracy to kind of, as Mark said earlier, proofread it, make sure there's sort of things in there that are sort of factually correct, you know, emphasise a few things that we think we might need to um, before it's then submitted off. So it, it is a, an involved process, but you can spread it over, you know, a period of time if necessary. And perhaps taking you back to your first entry, your first time entry, how how easy or difficult was that? The first one was definitely the most difficult um, because it's so far it was so far out of what I was used to doing. Um, as accountants, I think we're quite um, we're probably the last people generally to sort of say, look how good we are, look how good we are, look how good we are. Um, whereas actually, you know, in the award entry, you almost have to be in that frame of mind. You have to look at the things that you've done well and be prepared to tell people about those, um, which is to say, maybe as accountants generally, we're maybe not as confident or um, outgoing as doing that as others, other business owners might be. Um, so that was probably what I found most difficult, is actually trying to, you know, I didn't want people to think that uh, this fear that people might think that we were, were kind of showing off or there was that element to it. So that was something I was more concerned about than anything else. Uh, soon got past that after the first award, that was uh, way, way, way in my memory now. Um, but that was definitely a concern as to what people might perceive, you know, that we were just, you know, I don't know, being, being a bit too uh, big-headed or whatever it might well be. But, uh, yeah, so that was probably the challenge I particularly had in the first award entry. Um, Alex? My, my first entry, yeah. it was horrendous. Um, I had social media side of things uh, and you know, with new practices and new businesses uh, I've often found that there's a lot of wishful thinking uh, in the entry well this we hope this is going to happen yes. we hope that is going to yeah. happen yeah. and you don't generally win awards for having better hopes than, yeah. than anybody else yeah. you actually need to have achieved something be able to evidence what you're doing um, so just getting a lot of followers or likes or whatever that's not business yeah. in itself yeah. But that's not to say a new firm cannot win an award by, well, by targeting in, you know, in a, a new area, by doing something that's actually actually is slightly different Absolutely. Uh, than, than what's going on in their, in their market. And, and they're becoming specialists. Yeah, and, and, there's, and there's a number of 
uh, accountancy awards in particular and, and local new business awards that are particularly focused on the new practice yeah. or startup practice or whatever. And there's a difference between a month and a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need to have something behind you, some uh, evidence beyond your aspirations, but fair degree of enthusiasm doesn't no, no, but, but and I, I, I get the impression Alex has got some. A, a lot of these, a lot of these special people specialising in niche areas and niche you know, businesses so. um, actually can, can demonstrate that through, including some of the old traditional areas such as you know contractors. Or like there are lots of innovative firms out there working in those sectors. And and, and what you are just picking up yep. on that point as well. It is easier for startup practice to stand out from others mm -hmm. if they start up with a particular niche or focus. Yeah. Doesn't mean that's all they do. Absolutely. But as long as there's something that helps them to stand out compared to other general practices or people who have just started up without clarity of focus and ambition, mm -hmm. it's much easier. And so, well, Mark, Mark mentioned that we have a a question which has come in and. Christian wants to know um, what practices are each of the participants um, um, in and what, what have they won? Um, so what awards actually have you won and, and you know, you, what's, your, um, what's your, your practice? Um, so my practice, I set it up in um, April 2015 and I made a decision um, for it to be, to utilise all the technology. Um, to make it fully cloud, fully paperless. Um, so it's completely digital. And um, we've removed um, processing, so as automated as possible. Yeah. Um, so when I first started, um, I had a handful of clients. And after the first year, I got to about 30. So it, it um, and then my second year, it then went increased by 120%. Yeah. So um, I entered, um, most outstanding, uh, sorry, I entered a Women in Broadband Award, mm -hmm. um, which was a local govern, um, government one, um, the local council, um, and they have 300 applications a month going in for startups. Yeah. So for me to be recognised as um, the most outstanding achievement, that was um, great for me. I was, you know, obviously it was a proud moment so that they recognised that I set this business up. And not only that, then I was helping startups as well. And, people within that area, yeah. within that industry. Yeah. So, um, and I had a lot of support from um, the Winter Group at the mm -hmm. same time. Um, you know, they helped me as a startup um, to, you know, to build up my profile. Mm -hmm. And again, it went into the local papers. Um, they gave me a whole list of uh, people that I could communicate to and connect to, which I've held on to. So whenever I do um, connect yeah. now and I enter awards, I literally send an email shoot out to all of them with everything that they need, including the photo and you know all the publicity right. stuff. So it's ready, and they can email it or put it in the paper straight away. So it's ready. Mm -hmm. um, and the um, other award that I won was um, the most um, was a Cloud uh, Synergy 2017, mm -hmm. um, the best all new cloud practice. Right. So again, that was a, a celebrity um, presentation, um, which was really cool. Um, and again, that was looking at my practice and putting it all together and um, showing them that, that it is a, the cloud isn't new, but I think where I've made it fully cloud and utilised um, you know, all of the technology to mm -hmm. pull it all together, where I can literally be based from anywhere, yeah. um, and, and then extending that to then becoming a global brand. So it, it's more what you've done for you and your team and then the practices you serve. As opposed to as opposed to being, I've, I've moved everything onto cloud. Yeah. In which case, I would go. So what? Yes. It's actually that entire process. It's the entire process. Yeah. And and Alan, um, <coughs> just just list just list a few of them, please. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. We've been we've been very uh, lucky. We've been trading for ten and a half years now, and we've been extremely lucky to be shortlisted in a number of awards. Uh, one still loses us, which is the British County Awards, which uh, I know I, I mentioned to Mark when you were at the uh, context last year. Um, but the, the first, I mean, we're focused primarily on business advisory services. That's kind of where we, we try to differentiate the practice and um, open above the, the traditional accountancy services, the core services. Um, and we've done that really from, from the start, using more of the technology that's available now to allow us to do that. 
Um, but um, first award we won was the Wirral Investment Network Awards, which was for just Wirral businesses generally. And that was for the start of the year back in 2008. Um, and really then since then, that was, I suppose that gave us the encouragement um, and motivation, I suppose, to sort of continue doing it once, once you've won it. I think that the problem with winning an award sometimes can be that if you don't win one in the next couple of years, maybe the clients and the business community think you may have gone off the boil a little bit. So there's a, there's a little bit of pressure there, I think, to kind of keep them, keep them standards up. Um, but yeah, since 2009, we've been finalists in the British County Awards every year. I highly commended in two awards last year. We've won the Practice Excellence Awards. We've won the 2020 Most Innovative Sole Practitioner Awards, I think, four times. Um, so we're, we're, we're probably better at award entries than lots of other things, I think. That's what I'm I might have missed my calling, perhaps. Um, but yeah, no, we, we really like to sort of measure where we're up to, you know, get the team involved, hopefully celebrate something on the night if we're in and we celebrate even if we don't. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a good, great way to, to keep our, our brand and our uh, profile um, risen, if you like, within the, within the local area. But just the size of your practice as well, Alan? Yeah, team of eight, including myself. Um, I went to say, hence uh, why I'm not there today, we're in the process of moving offices as we, as we speak. So uh, I think the CERN is being collected in about two minutes. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> so, uh, it, it's all a bit, bit, bit touch and go at the moment. But yeah, it's, it's been a great um, great journey I and mean, it, it's, it's continuing that way. So. so, you know, I think the message going out there is you don't actually have to be a massive firm to enter into awards. In fact, those where where the practitioners are involved in the day-to-day -day work, day-to-day -day client work, actually you, you're probably better equipped at actually entering a set of awards because you, you're very close and you're close to your clients, you're close to your staff as, as, as well. Um, I'm going to ask that really difficult question, so I'm going to start with Mark and he's looking really worried now. <laughs> um, and it's, what would be your top tip my top tip over and above those I've already mentioned. Mm. So I've always suggested giving yourself enough time, having it proofread by somebody not involved in the process. Yep. Um, ensuring that, well actually I, I think I, I'll go back to something I said right at the beginning because it, it's not one of the most common tips, which is look at the entry criteria and take out of them the adjectives and terminology that they've used. List them all out on a spreadsheet somewhere both for the awards generally and specifically for the category that you're entering. Yeah. And then identify what you can say or include in your entry that ticks each of those boxes. Because a bit like with the old exam question technique, you're making it so much easier for the judges to give you marks or to, award you, to identify you as a winner because you're satisfying all the criteria, ticking all the boxes for what they're looking for. And for goodness sake, make it easy for the judges in the first line or paragraph of your entry to go, oh, I'm interested to read on about this because yeah. this is not the standard stuff that it's in, that's in all the other entries. And um, Alan, what would your top tip be? Uh, I think my, my top tip would be to dial up, I'll, I'll put two up again. What one is Google Alerts? Um, just so you know when the awards are, we've got a Google Alert which is out for business awards, small business awards, you know, local business awards. So we have a weekly email alert that tells, I mean a lot of them in America or New Zealand or whatever, so they're not necessarily completely relevant, but we can then identify the awards that are relevant for us or for any of our clients, share them on Twitter, send the link to the client, say oh, I saw this and thought to you, you know, there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing better really than, than that from a client's point of view. Um, and then I think looking back to what Mark said about giving yourself enough time, we, we've got a diary reminder in when we know when the deadlines are for the awards, and we've got a diary remember to say award completed uh, seven days prior to the actual uh, award deadline. Um, I would say, and something that is always repeats in, in my mind, and it, again it comes back to when we did our exams, and it's read the question, and read it over again, and when you're writing it, back to the question and just check and make sure that you've actually answered it correctly because it's just so easy to move away from it because you want to talk about something else but it actually doesn't actually relate to the question and just keep it simple um, it was 
I try not to talk about accounts and tax and payroll or, or anything, but um, you know, just try to keep it relevant. Yep. And I love to talk about accounts and tax, so, but <laughs> I'm not being allowed to today. Um, well, as as uh, the person asking the questions, I'm now going to do my um, talkative, and I'm going to say my tips. Actually, they've all been said so far, so obviously watch watch this again if you've missed any of them, but it's actually tell your story, and actually tell people where you are, tell people the journey that you actually went through, and actually what you've achieved going through that, so that's, that's important. Um, when you're asked about financial information, use it to support your story. Don't just leave it there as a, okay, we ask for financial information, it's sitting there, but it bears no relevance at all to that particular entry. Make it actually very easy for, for judges and for the organisers. So stick to the word count, use supporting material for your story, and use technology, as we've said, to, to highlight that story. So we, we've heard about videos and how easy it is to do videos attached uh, to that story. Also remember, um, the judges, I mean, you won't believe it, seeing Mark and I, but tend to know what's happening in quite a few firms. So don't don't try and bluff the judges. Um, make it your story and make it what you've achieved with your staff and with your clients. It, it is actually about them. So get them also to tell that story. Get your staff and your clients to tell their story. Make sure you've entered the right category or categories. Quite often, I've looked at a, an award or looked at a particular entry and thought, I wish you were somewhere else because you've actually demonstrated everything which another category requires you to, to demonstrate. So make sure you look at that. And, and you, won't, you won't get swapped across. You won't get, no, you never get swapped across. No, and, and also um, use your experience and what you've been through, not only to tell your clients what you're doing going through the awards, but actually help them and talk to them about actually entering awards going forth. Now, we have um, some awards that are, that are coming up fairly soon. We've got the British Accountancy Awards, and that has a deadline for entries of the 7th of July. So there is a little time left to enter that. More pressing, there is um, the Accounting Web Practice Excellence Awards, and that's at, at the end of June. That's the 30th of June entry. So don't be put off by waiting a week. If it's your first time, do that one, then do the other one afterwards. Then you've, then you've allowed a week and, for each. Yeah, and check check the awards uh, pages Absolutely. on the website because although we're talking about the awards, in fact, there's a number of different categories. And you might want to, I don't know if uh, Alex or Alan's done this, sometimes you can enter more than one category most in definitely. The, same, the same awards. Yes, most definitely. And if you do that, picking up on Alex's point earlier, do make sure that you RTFQ, read the questions. Absolutely. And I was yeah. just going to say yeah. that. I'm not sure whether I was allowed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just read the, read, read the question and make sure that your, your two or three entries are sufficiently different and distinct rather than one entry for all of them. I, I remember many years ago, uh, it was the Taxation Awards, and a large firm of accountants submitted entries for four or five categories. And their marketing department clearly invested an enormous amount of time and effort in this. And they had an a, a, A3 sheet folded in half, lots of coloured photos and lots of standard content about the, uh, the entry, uh, about the firm and the, the teams. And only the front page, if you did, one of four, was actually different. The, yeah. I think the actual endorsements and recommendations, client comments were different. But all Everything five else. of them looked the same. It was in the days of hard copy entries. Um, sufficiently long after the event now, we looked at those five and after a while we just got bored of looking at them because they all looked the same and ultimately that firm didn't win anything because we couldn't remember which one was which. And, and that's, that's you know, also the point, you, you do judge more than one category. Yeah. So if you have entered multiple times, it is likely that a judge will see you've entered more than, than once. It is also... It depends, it depends on the awards. It depends, yeah, yeah. Quite, quite often, yeah. quite often. The other ones I wanted to, or the other award I just wanted to highlight is 1st of September. The 1st of September, um, it's the Queen's Awards and the Queen's Awards for Enterprise. Now, these are quite good for both 
firms' practices to enter and, and also clients to enter actually last for a five-year period. And so there's promotional material for a five-year period. Um, and therefore, outstanding achievement for, for UK businesses in the categories of innovation, international trade, sustainable development, and promoting opportunity through social mobility. So they are a very good set of um, awards also to enter. So I'd encourage you to, to look at that for both your practice and also your clients. You will find clients who you approach and say, actually, we think you'd be particularly good at entering these awards. We think you meet that criteria. They quite like that. Um, I, think that's a, I think that's a great point that Alan alluded to it earlier as mm -hmm. well. You're making the point now. The idea of encouraging clients and saying, we saw this, this, uh, uh, this, this uh, awards facility is coming up. You might like to enter it, think what it could do for your business. We think you deserve it. We'd support you with it. I think clients would love that enthusiasm and proactivity on the part of their accountant. Fantastic facility. One thing which we haven't mentioned, because I don't think it tends to happen in the accountancy world, is some of the awards out there you have to pay to enter. I don't yeah. know if you've ever entered for any of those, or you, Alan, have you ever entered for any that you have to pay to enter? Um, that has been a few, yeah, but um, only, only, on, only on a couple of occasions, most of them are yeah, free to enter. Yeah, but it's just worth being aware that sometimes Absolutely. you have, have to pay to enter. And even if you're not paying to enter, um, this, this checklist I mentioned earlier that I've done and created, any, anybody watching this is welcome to have a copy of it. Just let me know through the Facebook page or bookmarkly.co.uk, mark at bookmarkly.co.uk, and I'll send you the uh, checklist of uh, everything to do in order to win awards, to improve your chances, yeah. and also a checklist of 20 ways to benefit from having entered the awards. Most of, the, most of all of those points have been covered in this, mm -hmm. in this session, but there's probably a few other things there as well. Uh, but the, the costs of entering, it's not just the time, that is business development yeah. time anyway. Yeah. If you've been shortlisted, there's always a possibility you've won, so there's the cost of attending the awards, time away from the office, Absolutely. is it just you, is it the team, are you going to have to dress up, and, you know, is it a black tie event, some of younger staff might not have black tie stuff, might need to hire it, you're going to cover the cost for that, you're going to cover the cost for somebody to man the phones or somebody else to look after the office if you're away overnight, because often the award ceremonies yeah, aren't local unless it's a, a local business award. There are other things to consider, as well other costs beyond the time it takes to to enter the award and to prepare your entry. But fundamentally, it's going to be worth it because you're, the world and your clients, your the introducers and influencers in your business community might perceive, if they haven't got involved in awards themselves, they might perceive that you have been judged against the entire universe mm -hmm. of other people like you, all the accountants in the country, when in fact, you've been judged against those who've entered the award. Mm -hmm. And as a number of those won't have submitted decent entries, the universe you're actually being judged against is much smaller than outside people could possibly imagine, and probably much smaller than you might imagine yourself. So not, not to take anything away from those who win, because having judged awards, and, yeah, I've, I've judged awards where there have been three entries, yeah. and I've judged awards where there have been 33 entries, rarely, rarely more than that. And yeah, it, the, it's always worthwhile. Yeah, winners deserve to win. And on that, on that note, winners deserve to win, actually. Um, do consider entering the awards. You will find further details on the awards and ACCA can send those, um, send those out to you on the, on the relevant pages. We'll also um, make sure that you have those, those links so you can actually do consider entering the awards and do consider entering that process. And a big thank you to Alex, Mark and Alan. Thank you very much for your insights. Thank you. Thank you.